Murray, thank you so much for joining me today. I am now recording, um, and to oh, start good. the interview, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit uh, of a story. Um, so cast yourself back to 2006, um, yeah. and of course, there was the amazing Doctor Who celebration concert, um, which came to the Millennium Centre. Um, now, yeah. I grew up a, a huge Doctor Who fan. It's the moment it came on TV in 2005, um, my uncle told me, he said, you want to watch this? And I was like, oh, I'm not going to watch this. And he said, just actually sit and watch it. And I watched it and I've been hooked ever since. And naturally, I wanted to go and watch the Doctor Who celebration concert. But the tickets went like that. Like, literally, they were they were scooped up in an instant. So my uncle Sorry. had to have the disappointing moment of telling me uh, that he couldn't get tickets. Um, uh, cut to a couple of months later, um, on the day, yeah, on the day, he said, oh, the, the Millennium Centre uh, had, had rang him up and they'd said that they suddenly had tickets available. Yeah. So my uncle told me that we were going, and I quote, tenant spotting, not telling me that we were going to go to this amazing concert. And then, and then we ended up going. And I was meeting people who who I idolise. So Noel Clark, um, you know, Camille Kajuri, all these amazing people. So um, it was amazing. And I just want to say, I, I'm proper fanboying at the moment. <laughs> I thought you were gonna, yeah. Well, th- I thought you were gonna say, and then my uncle phoned me two months ago, rather than two months after, and no. said, "Oh, do you remember how I messed up and never got you any tickets for that concert in 2006?" And and you just would have had a, a little reminder of an incredibly disappointing time 14 years ago. But it wasn't that story. It was a much nicer one. <laughs> it was a lovely story. Um, but of course, um, today, Murray, we're not here to talk about Doctor Who. We'll talk about Doctor Who a little bit, but we're not here to talk about Doctor Who. We're here to talk about It's a Sin, which has yeah. just come out and has had amazing reviews and has generally been received amazingly so for you what was it like to work with Russell again and to work with him on this amazing tv program um it was it was surprisingly uh I mean it wasn't it was quite difficult show to make I think I mean it finished filming prior to the lockdown obviously so some of the obvious difficulties were avoided but um you know when we when we were doing all of the editing all of the usual production process post-production um everything had shut down and uh it it, you know it it was it was it was difficult seeing all of these all of this footage of you know young kids being wheeled down hospital corridors not able to touch each uh, and you see their family or touch anyone or you know all of that when that was on the nightly news and that was what we were coming to terms with in you know in the world um i mean it's a brilliant show it's just every episode has got its own just uh, just obsessive you know drive towards the end and it's um you know it's it's always it's always easy to it's always easy to work on a russell script you know because they sing his scripts sing so writing music for them is a really easy job you know mm-hmm. how, how do you kind of uh, approach um when, when you get the script in how do you approach uh music for for the actual program like it, it, i just imagine like it's some sort of idea that comes to your head but there's probably a lot more of a technical <laughs> process involved in that so talk to me about that no i think you're right i think it is just it is it, a lot of the time it's trying not to block you know, the idea that you first have is having the confidence to just run with it and present it and say, this is my idea. I hope it's not a million miles from where you were thinking. I mean, actually with It's a Scene, it was a million. My first idea was it needed to have an 80s sounding soundtrack. So I wrote some music like that and I sent it to Russell and Nicola Schindler and Phil uh, Collinson, the exec producers. and. Um, you know, basically the feedback I got was, look, we're really not looking for that kind of, you know, period drama. For me, the idea that the 80s is period drama is a bit of a head spin anyway, because to me, it still seems like it was just yesterday. And I'm like, oh my God, I grew up in a period drama. Um, but, you know, I think slow. we had quite a long time because to, to work on it and slowly they started adding 
the tracks that are in the soundtrack from from the artists you know um, of the time and slowly this 80s soundtrack evolved and actually what I mostly did was just try and make it feel seamless mm -hmm. between the tracks that are spinning um, the big pop tunes from the time and my score so it was actually a little bit of a process of just trying to you know make it not sound like you know this is score and that you know this is you know these bits of tracks and I actually looked on I, I looked online and it worked to a certain extent because I noticed that some people are trying to find these tracks so what is this who's this one by you know <laughs> and it's like oh well that was the score yeah so. It's like, oh, that's me. Um, and of course, you're um, working uh, with Russell T. Davis again. Uh, you worked a lot with Russell in the past. Um, kind of what keeps bringing you back to Russell's projects? What really, uh, why, why are you invested so much in these projects? Well, he is like the best writer on television, you know. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> like completely agree i actually told him that i interviewed him at bafta cymru and i started the interview by saying you are my favorite writer ever and he was a bit like uh, I, I, yeah and i was just like i'm total fanboying <laughs> yeah well i mean i'm sure a lot of people tell him that um yeah it is i mean I, I, honestly there isn't anybody who who would turn down a the job i mean russell could ask anybody to do the music and they would so you know why do i do it because i'm asked you know so and i love i love i just love his work you know you know i, I mean i love the fact that i always used to say you know and it is still true even though russell started to to kill off his characters that he did which is something he didn't used to do um and I, you know, he's got such a overwhelming love for, for, for humanity, you know, it's he's just, he's so affable towards this species that live here. You know, he's, he's, he's got such generosity towards everything and everybody. I, I really like that. I think it's just such a lovely thing. And it's, it's quite unusual in, not just in TV, it's just quite unusual in, in art generally, you know, to, to be to, to, to be that warm, to have so much tenderness and warmth towards mm. the human. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, um, Murray, I cannot do an interview with yourself without mentioning uh, Doctor Who. Of course, you were the composer from 2005 all the way to 2017. Um, when the phone call first came in to do Doctor Who, what was your initial reaction? How did you react? Uh, I think I wrote an email to my dad because my dad had seen, had read that um, Doctor Who was coming back and he said, have they asked you yet? And I said, no, I don't, I'm sure they won't do that. And I think I just, first of all, I emailed Russell back and just said, yes, of course. And then I sent an email to my dad and said, oh, they asked me and, and I'm going to, I'm doing it. So, you know, it's quite straightforward. Two emails on yeah. my email account. Um, and, you know, there are so many tracks which you are famous for um, in Doctor Who. You know, you've got the likes of Doomsday, I Am the Doctor, the Doctor's Theme, um, all these different tracks. Have you got one which you are sort of more proud of than any other? I know that's hard. Well, it's, been such a long, it's been such a long time. Uh, I'm really, I, 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 you know, I can't say that there's, I can't think of any. I, I mean, all of the ones that you mentioned, I, I've got a affection for you know it's just because I, I, I mean I you know a lot of these tracks that have become quite um that people remember at the time they were just written as a cue you know so it was in the middle of a week you know like things like this is Gallifrey it was that episode you know um when the master is just lying on top of David Tennant and you know and then they suddenly have this dream about this planet and it was just a, a, a little piece of music one piece of music in that week's episode of 40 minutes of music in that season of eight hours of music you know and it, it uh, at the when it was first written it was, didn't have a name it was just like episode 12 nuptra uh, you know q17 or something mm -hmm. and then later on it becomes you know same with doomsday you know it was just a piece of music um, in 
series two episode 13 probably yeah um you know <laughs> it was just and and all of them um it was the drama from the screen that made those pieces of music exist because without that scene happening that piece of music would never have existed without without the scene and the myth of Gallifrey that that's the piece of music now known as this is Gallifrey that yeah I know what you mean. I, I know what you mean. I suppose you don't think of the final product when you're actually putting it together. You just imagine it as sort of like a piece of the final episode rather than this is a track for an album, you, you know? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's, how it, that's basically how it is. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think of it as music separate from, from the show at all. I just send it in that week and there it is. And I mean, I, I remember when I sent in, you know, I am the doctor for the first time and, mm -hmm in series five and I mean I didn't I didn't know that they were on to it and, and even notice that there was a new theme there um, but from the second they heard it they sort of said I mean I think it was Beth at the time and Piers said and Stephen of course they just said that you know that's that you that piece that you can you just put it here as well and put it and I, I was like oh good oh, oh good they noticed it I mean, that's the first stage, you know, does it get through the executives? Does it, yeah. does it stay on the show? Of course. Sometimes I feel like, it, you know, I've probably told this story before, but there was somebody who really hated the bit that goes, da -da -dun 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 it was like that B section of I am the doctor. And they wanted you just wanted me to get rid of it. And if I had, then that, pe that would never have been, this would have never sounded the same. So yeah. No. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, once you left Doctor Who, um, the, the fabulous Sagan Akinola um, that took over the job as composer. Have you had a had chance to kind of have a listen to some of his music and his interpretation of the show? No, I mean, I've, I was living in America and I've only just come back and I have, ne I have not seen Doctor Who since I since really? the last oh, wow. I worked on. So I have no idea. I haven't somehow the universe has kept it from jumping into my living room. I've, I've not heard the theme. I have not heard a single piece. Uh, you know, I've got, kid, I've got kids who are too young to watch Doctor Who. And, you know, in, and we don't actually have TV on um, mm. very much. Of course. I can't, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, Murray, again, like I say, you are one of my heroes. You know, when I was younger, um, I listened to your soundtracks over and over and over again. And that ultimately got me tickets for Doctor Who Celebration, ultimately. Um, so Murray, from all of us, thank you so much for having a chat with me. Congratulations on It's a Sin. It's incredible. Diolch thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Sam.